So I've never done any actual chemistry, but um, I recently wanted to, so I set up a little lab in a corner in my apartment, which is a barn, hence the name, and uh, decided that I want to do a few simple reactions um, just to familiarize myself with the equipment. So the first thing I'll be trying is making sodium acetate from acetic acid and sodium bicarbonate. You might recognize those as being regular vinegar and baking soda. So I've already done the stoichiometry and found that for the 5% acetic acid I have, I need 400 milliliters and that will react with 29.4 grams of sodium bicarbonate. So I've already um, weighed out and measured out the uh, two reactants. So I've actually attempted this two times in the past and have failed to make anything other than a mess. I think the reason for that is because I tried to react the baking soda in powdered form and it's just very difficult to stir and keep it reacting uniformly. What ends up happening is you have a layer of uh, reacted material around a clump of uh, sodium bicarbonate and then when you stir it all of a sudden that baking soda reacts with the vinegar in the solution and it just goes crazy from there. So first thing I need, I want to try is to react it in an aqueous solution. So I just need to um, squirt in some distilled water until it's all dissolved. Um, if you're gonna buy labware, don't buy really crappy Chinese stuff, apparently. Because this bottle leaks all over the place. Okay, uh, let me try that again. Yeah, I took the lid off the bottle and I just, I'm just using his regular uh, cup, more or less, right now. It doesn't matter how much water I end up in there, as long as it's enough to um, dissolve the baking soda. Uh, but I will be drying this product, the product of this reaction out later, so the less water I can add, the better. You know, simply because it's easier to dry water that was never added in the first place. So it looks like baking soda is a bit harder to dissolve than I thought it would be, but this solution is, you know, aqueous enough, I guess. There's still some undissolved particles, but it's all spread out enough. I don't think it'll matter for the reaction. So the next step is to pour it into the reaction vessel, which is just going to be a round bottom flask in a um, stirring mantle. Uh, I've quickly found that two feet is not enough height for chemistry stuff. But anyway, I'm working with what I got. Oh, I can't see. That's embarrassing. I think my next purchase is going to be a tripod. Okay, so off camera, I uh, <clears throat> filled up the reaction vessel, the flask there, uh, rinsed out the funnel and valve, and then filled it with acetic acid. So now I'm going to start the reaction. Um, stirring set to high. And hopefully I can avoid making a massive mess like the other times. So it looks like the reaction is controllable in this case. Uh, the last couple times I got pretty much no reaction, and then it all just suddenly splooted out of the neck of the flask. This proof is the, that the reaction is happening. If I plug up one port, you can see the CO2, CO2 gas going and bubbling up through the vinegar. Share a note that I'm able to add the vinegar much, much more rapidly than I was in any of the previous attempts, and the reaction is still very controllable. So. This part of the process is actually going together uh, pretty swimmingly. There you can see the last little bit, and then we'll be able to move on to the next step. Okay, so this is the setup for the uh, dehydration of the sodium acetate. I have my uh, heating mantle going and stirring. Uh, stirring is kind of unnecessary, but I just like the swooshing. And that'll go up into a um, splashback arrester, I think they're called. Um, but when you're pulling a vacuum and boiling a liquid, the bubbles end up very large because it doesn't take very much gas and when they splash, they have a, they make a mess and you can end up with it in your condenser and it'll ruin your whole batch. I have a thermometer adapter. Um, I filled it with a little bit of water and I actually have it hooked up to the temperature probe for my hot plate. Uh, it's just more convenient to read than a mercury thermometer or something. And that goes up here to my condenser, which is very barely not touching the light bulb. The blue hose is the 
um, output to the condenser and the purple is the intake back to the water chiller which is this machine right here uh, I got this off of eBay um, it doesn't actually cool the water below room temperature it just holds it as close to room temperature as possible so I'm gonna turn that on should be able to see water pumping in and that will allow the gas to condense and it will be collected into this beaker or uh, flask this flask is smaller because it's all I have I don't have enough two necked flasks in the size that I would need for that then I have a carburetor gauge just so I can keep an eye on what the vacuum pressure is if I let the vacuum pressure get too low I run to the issue of uh, this flask I'll start boiling as well and then your my vacuum pump gets full of uh, water and it's not very fun to clean up so I am wearing safety goggles when I start to pump this down I'm at 24 C that should be all right I really only need to be about 10 degrees Celsius above atmospheric pressure for this to work uh, above atmospheric temperature for this to work I've actually tried it before but I used the Squirrely Q type condenser there's a technical name for it but basically water got stuck in the little um, squirrely parts and then that increased what the vacuum required was and then it just started boiling from my lower flask so to control the vacuum level there's my vacuum pump there uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a valve here that is open to air. So if I allow a little bit of air to leak in at the pump, it reduces how much it pulls from the rest of the setup. So that is switched on right here. I am definitely wearing safety goggles for this too. Uh, glass, you know, when it implodes, it's a little rough. I'm going to close the valve. Should start to be able to see the vacuum going down. I'm going to shoot for maybe 20 inches of mercury, right around normal motor. the oil cap off the vacuum pump that's not a great thing to do let me just get that on there okay about 20 inches of mercury you can start to see some boiling I did turn the stirring off for this and that's happening at just 30 C so um, in a bit once I have uh, vapor coming over and all that I will show it to you more one thing I may have to do is since it's only a 10 C difference in temperature, I may have to insulate this part of the column so it doesn't all just condense and fall back into the beaker flask. Okay, I guess that's it for now. I'll start recording again when something interesting happens. All right, vigorous bubbling is occurring. One thing I didn't mention that's pretty important is the temperature in the heating mantle is controlled solely by how hard of a vacuum I'm pulling because um, <clears throat> it'll just keep heating and heating and heating and the only way the heat gets out is by being drawn off in that boiling vapor and it looks like in the condenser you can start to see droplets forming and they're coming over if you're doing this one thing you really need to watch out for is boiling in this flask it shouldn't happen too much if you set it up right but just make sure that your vacuum does not get too low or your um, fluid get too cold in this uh, reservoir. What I forgot to show is that the water is just room temperature, 21C in this case, and I'm at about 35.9C in the heating mantle. And this is still just starting off. Um, I believe I've already mentioned I'm wearing safety glasses, but uh, you should definitely wear safety glasses if you're doing this. So I can see splashing in this um, reservoir, and that shimmering, I believe, is where water's warming up when it touches the glass and boiling from the bottom up. So I can feel that the uh, glass is quite warm, but the condenser is quite cool. 
So I'm going to set up a little water bath for this flask just to keep as much water out of my pump as possible. Temperature is up to 37.3 right now and 21.8 or so on the uh, cooling water. That's about how it seems like it's going to stay. Temperatures haven't been climbing too wildly yet. So I'm just going to set up uh, probably just tap water bath. I don't actually have any ice right now, so it'll be good enough. So my water bath turned out pretty hokey. Um, I don't really have a good way to do that. So I'm thinking one of my next projects will be building a nice little um, recirculating water bath that hooks up in line with the condenser, probably before the condenser. That way you can just keep uh, <clears throat> your product cool. Because I think I'm going to do a lot of vacuum distillations. It's just so much easier and takes way less energy. Like this is only a 300 watt hot plate or a heating mantle. It's not, it's maybe 100 degrees Fahrenheit and it's boiling vigorously. And the vacuum pump uh, itself is not pumping any gas unless the receiving side gets too hot. I didn't think of this first, but I removed the ring stand and replaced the paper plate with uh, a beaker, and that seems to be working much better. You can see how much vapor has collected. It's been probably 20 minutes of uh, this going, which it is pretty slow, but given I'm only putting in 300 watts to boiling off almost a liter of water, it's respectable. I have checked the back of my vacuum pump, and I'm not getting any water in the oil sight glass, so... That's always a plus. It's a quick update. We're at uh, 23 inches of mercury, 41.3 C in the heating mantle, and 23.8 on the cooling water. So when I brought up the topic of insulation, this is why water is the vapor is condensing up in the the tubing leading up to the condenser and falling and getting trapped and then reboiling and then condensing and falling and just kind of wasting throughput. It's not a huge deal, but it just looks kind of interesting. Seeing the water going up and down between the gas and vapor phase, or vapor and liquid phase. Close enough. And here's some more boiling. So I drained the collection vessel and uh, restarted the vacuum dehydration. You can see it's almost done in there. Um, so typically, the way you would tell when uh, distillation is done is by looking at the temperature. Once the temperature suddenly starts to rise, you know that everything with a certain boiling point has boiled off. But I don't know if you can see it very well. I can't quite get my uh, probe all the way to the liquid. So instead, what I'm going to look at is the vacuum gauge. If it goes to somewhere around 25, uh, inches of mercury, then I know that all the water, at least all the water that's heated by the mantle, will have already been boiled off, and I know it's going to be good enough for what I'm working on here. So it looks like I might have actually had some success on this run. There's a lot of solids in there, um, there's very little water remaining. You can see the splashback arrester, or uh, I'm still not totally sure what it's called. But whatever it is, it's doing its job because a lot of solids have collected on it that would normally have splashed up into the condenser. And you can see everything downstream of that is completely clear. This is what I was able to uh, collect out of the flask. It started out as nearly a liter of uh, liquid all when I started. And now we're down below 100 milliliters. So hopefully it's concentrated enough that the uh, hot ice demonstration will work. So I'm just going to let this cool and see if it works. Um, it is very yellow. Um, from what I've found, that's not totally uncommon, making it with regular vinegar. Just household chemicals. I don't know how well you can see it. It's much darker than I would have expected, though. It's possible I have some baking soda contamination. Um, I'm not totally sure. I checked the pH, and it's about 8. So I don't know if uh, I have unreacted baking soda or if the sodium acetate is making the solution basic. But I'll just let this cool off for a bit and we'll see how it goes. All right, so the liquid has cooled off. I'm worried there might be some baking soda in there um, dropping out of solution. I don't know if that's going to mess with trying to get the uh, super saturated state of sodium acetate. So I don't know if this demonstration is going to work, but I hope it does.
This is a weird, thick liquid. Uh, okay, let me figure out what I actually have here real quick. Well, this is kind of exciting. So I um, was thinking that I would try to freeze it to get everything out of suspension or um, just chill it a lot in the freezer and then put it in a centrifuge and try and separate it out. But as soon as I poured it into the plastic uh, test tubes, it all froze or, you know, did the hot ice thing. It all crystallized and it is noticeably warm. It was actually cooled in my refrigerator and the whole whole beaker has completely solidified. So, looks like this works. Um, I may have just made the stupid mistake of pouring it onto a clean surface and not giving it any way to crystallize. So I'm going to heat this back up. Um, I don't know exactly how hot it has to get for the water to be reabsorbed into the crystal structure and become a liquid, but I'll, I'll give it another go on this demo and maybe I don't have baking soda contamination. Um, I kind of broke the uh, fundamental rule of chemistry, which is don't lick the science. Um, and found out it it does taste a lot like baking soda, but there's definitely something else in there. In this case, I have new glassware, and um, everything I put in is food grade, meant to be eaten, so not too concerned. But yeah, don't don't do what I did. So it's still a bit warm from reheating, but um, I think I've actually dehydrated it more than it needed to be. So now that it has some crystals in there, it's really wanting to form more of them. So. Let's see if it works this time, or if I need to cool it down a bit more. Eh, not really. Hmm. I'm going to put it in the fridge and try again. I just didn't want the whole beaker to solidify in the fridge. So this is definitely, uh, beyond the point of super saturated and uh, full of impurities so it's pretty difficult to find the sweet spot where it will crystallize but doesn't already it, it might have already crystallized on me eh, you can sorta of course I can get it to work off camera but not on camera and you can see some sludge if that counts well, anyway, when, the first time when I poured it into a plastic test tube, it solidified instantly. So I'm going to consider it a su success. I guess you guys just won't be able to see any success here. Looks kind of gross. Feels kind of gross, too. It's very weird. I don't know how to describe it, but I don't like it. They're not the prettiest crystals, but they do at least crystallize. I think the baking soda impurities is uh, messing me up a bit. So if I were to do this again, I would use an excess of vinegar because everything in that should be able to be taken out by the vacuum pump. But yeah, I definitely learned a lot from this experiment. So I hope you like seeing my first successful chemistry project. Um, hopefully I'll see you around again. Um, next time I will have a tripod, so if you got motion sickness from the nauseating bouncing around that uh, will hopefully end with this video so thanks for watching